Hi, I'm Danny Black. Welcome back to another edition of Hobby News Daily Hot Corner. I'm joined today by Ryan Ripkin. How are you, Ryan? I'm good. Uh, I'm a little curious what these questions are going to be, Danny, but other than that, I'm, I'm doing well. Well, as you know, but maybe not everybody else knows, uh, the hot corner in baseball is third base. And if you score in your book, that is position number five. And so that leads us to five questions today. You know what? I didn't even put that all together, but now it even makes a way more sense. And uh, that I was curious. I'm right, still like, like, yeah, yeah. Mine just exploded and I'm supposed to know baseball. I will say this though. And I don't know if this is a bad, if it's a confession maybe, but growing up, like I did not know the numbers around the positions. It took a long time. It really took to like pro ball for me to get it done. See, the difference was you were playing. I was in the stands writing your name down with a number next to it. So I had to learn. Yeah, I, you know what? Uh, it's true. But I will say I'm glad I did. And actually, I think a lot of the pitchers in minor league baseball was a big reason because they always had to chart the game. Yep. And that's really where I, I learned more. Not from, uh, you know, being from a quote unquote baseball family, which well, again, see, I, I feel I feel bad saying that. Well, no, no, it's funny because my dad taught me how to score back in Memorial Stadium. They used to give you, I mean, this was funny, um, the free scorecard and, and like a miniature golf pencil, those tiny really? little like mini yeah. pencils. So, mm -hmm. so you could score just, that's how normal it was. It's routine. What a simpler yeah. time. It, it really is, you know, the thing that I love about it with baseball, it really is, I don't want to say it's maybe an art's the wrong word, but I just love that it was a classic part of when you went to a ball game. It was a classic thing of taking down notes of the game. Uh, times have changed a little bit, but but I'm glad we still have some people that are a big fan of it. I, I actually love it now. It just took me like 20 years to really understand what the heck was going on. Well, I, I will tell you, the only trick to scoring is root for no pinch hitters and no extra innings. Oh, I don't even know what to do with that. That's, that, that can be <laughs> that, that that that's where that's where it all goes up in the air. Um, there's a famous story, I believe it was Phil Rizzuto who would score while he was broadcasting. And uh, one day his partner looked over and saw that he had a note called MP for some batters. And you know, not everybody uses the same system. So his partner said to him, What what does MP stand for? He goes, Oh, missed play. <laughs> <laughs> so if he didn't see the play and he didn't see what happened, he just wrote MP for miss the play. Hey, honest, at least, you know, yep. All integrity right. on, on that card. <laughs> Let's start with the fun stuff. Since we're on a uh, video here, how big are you? Height wise? Height Weight wise? wise? Oh, we're well, going full Monty here. Mm, okay. Well, I don't think my height shrunk since I stopped playing. But when I was playing, I was 6'5", 240, we'll go with 245. That. And then now I still, I believe I'm 6'5", unless I slouch to a 6'4", and I'm around 215, 220. So uh, that is, uh, I, I believe, a little bit of transform transformation uh, finishing up the career. Well, I just learned from that answer that I need to grow to 6'5". So, um, okay. So what position would you want to play in any other sport that would not fit your body type? Oh, not fit my body type. I will say this. I think maybe because it's soccer and the international stars and I see Lionel Messi running around and he's the opposite of what I am. He's, he's a lot shorter and so quick footed and can put anything anywhere. I, like that to me would be a lot of fun because I don't think I could, you know, I played like forward and, and you, strike you've got that Holland ish height, you know, yeah. but, but I mean, but am I, I don't have that speed. You know what I mean? Well, Maybe. definitely if we're talking about something to be, I'd love to be fast. I'd love to be like a Usain Bolt and be yeah. able to break barrier like that. Again, we're talking about things I couldn't do, yep. whether, it's, whether it's uh but, but Usain Bolt, I think is a pretty tall guy. So I think the bigger thing is like, I just wish I was a little bit faster. You know, okay. so what, I, I think I think I can move a little bit, and that you know, being being uh, light footed was not a strong suit of mine. One of the five tools that that was uh, not a, not not an eighty. No, I don't think that was even a thirty. But um, I got a fifteen. So okay, I, I got to be higher than you. 
I, I got to yeah. be higher. Well, than considering it starts at twenty, it's really impressive. So, <laughs> um, oh gosh, best players you ever played against or with on the field your entire career, where you just looked at them and said, "Holy." Shirts and pants, uh, Juan Soto. Soto was the guy. Um, it was funny because when he came up, actually, story time here for a minute. Please. When, while I was at the Nationals and I was recovering from surgery, I went. I kept going to Instructional League in the fall. And uh, we had players then come over from the Dominican Republic that were over there in the winter, uh, in the Dominican League, the Summer League. And we're taking BP and we're out on the field and there's some outfielders doing some drills with one of the coaches. And, and one of our coaches comes up to a group of me and about four or five other uh, players from the States. And uh, they're talking about, you know, we're talking about whatever. And then the coach comes over. It's like, yeah, you see those outfielders over there. And then he points to Soto. He's like, yeah, that kid's 17. He goes, he's the best hitter in the organization. And then everyone's like, whoa, man. Like, he hasn't even <laughs> played in America yet. He, like, I go, I'm sure he's talented, but come on. And you look at him and you go, I, like, maybe. Like, I, I don't know. He just looks like a kid. And then, boy, was he right. And and, and it was just his ability to adapt. I, I still remember, you know, he started in low A the year he debuted into the bigs and just – Really, really special player. And the other one I will say that I never got to play with, but I had that same, oh, wow, like, you know, that that moment that kind of it sticks with you was Gunnar Henderson. Um, never got to play with Gunnar, but spring training, being around him and him doing stuff at 19 years old, I was just like, dude, this is freakish. And, and I never had that. The only other moment I had that with was Soto. So I, I was right about what, what happened with him. So I'm curious if Gunner follows that that path uh, for the O's upcoming. Well, at, at the time we're recording, it looked like he uh, started to get his swing together last night. And uh, my son, I don't know if you're familiar with the game So Rare, where you can draft uh, uh, players on your team on on an app. Mm -hmm. And I told him this upcoming week, I got a feeling that Gunner is going to keep that swing going. And uh, for fantasy sports, it might be a good week, if, you know, to get him cheap. So. Oh, yeah, I, I would because it's not everyone that they're worrying if he's going to get going. It's not an if. It, it no. isn't. It, it's just a matter of when because Gunner, people forget about this. They're seeing his struggles. It's the first time he's ever struggled as a, a professional athlete, baseball player, is at the big leagues at the highest level to start off his official rookie season, you know, and he's only like 84 at bats in because he walks so much. So. Yeah. I think great advice because I think we're about to see Gunnar Henderson have himself a great rest of the year. Okay, so these are my rules. I'm going to sidetrack to another question. When a guy like Bobby Witt goes against Adley Rutschman in a series, is there something in the back of both of their minds to justify where they were drafted one and two? As competitors, I'm sure that there probably is. You know, that they just want to go out there and play. But I think the bigger part is I think fans and organizations are looking at it when they see these matchups and they're going, well, did we make the right choice? And I can tell you in Baltimore, they believe they made the right choice. It's that's no Nick knock to Bobby. I think Bobby's a great player. Very he really talented. is very talented. But Adley really transformed that team in so many different ways. So I wouldn't say it's too much of the pressure on on between Adley versus Bobby, but I do I will tell you, fans and organizations are watching that closely, being and, and they're going to watch it moving forward. But I think both teams are going to be happy. But if for some reason one doesn't do as well over the other, it, it's going to keep going back to every time they face each other. We won't hear the end of it. Yeah, it'll it'll be hopefully not so drastic. But Manning and Leaf. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. Um, what's the craziest things you've ever seen uh, stolen from clubhouses by players, coaches, staff, umpires? Uh, you don't have to give names, but I know for a fact being around clubhouses what I've seen. So I can't imagine what you've seen. So there's a violation for actually stealing people's w Which, of know, course, property. we're not talking about. These were no, 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 no,
<laughs> not talking about any of that. However, some things where we had were, were some <laughs> clarification for some players because in the minor <laughs> leagues, you know, guys had trouble getting by, and especially um, I will say for even some cases, the international players had it way more challenging because you're in a new country, you don't have your family, and you're really just dependent on um, whatever the team provides, really. Yep. And so they always said at the field that you could take uh, take what you needed home. But I don't think the staff and the organization meant that, you know, the giant water coolers, the jugs, the five-gallon jugs. The ones that go on top of them. They go on top. Yep. That was being taken. Guys would take it off, pull it out, and, and put it over their shoulder, take it to the hotel. And that's just good water, though. It is good water. It's the it's the best, best you're gonna get down there. Yeah. And so, but then the guys were going, the the staff's <laughs> going, man, like what why are we out of water for for this spot? And they'd have to keep going, and then they figured out, like, oh, wait a minute, are you guys taking the water? And then we had to have a meeting. You're like, hey, <laughs> first off, very clever. Like, you know, it's it's very efficient. You guys are hydrated and we're happy. Secondly, we need to find another means of, you know, having water because the jug has to stay. Like, we, we need that jug. That's a lot of water for the guys. He goes, and, and he goes, you can fill up nine water bottles, whatever you want. Just don't you know heave that thing over your shoulder and walk out the door so that was probably one of the uh the funnier experiences because you when you're in pro ball you sit there and you think that it's going to be this well run uh everyone's everything was going to be given kind of to you it was going to be a step up but when you're down in the in the really lower levels and you're grinding through and that was in florida the gulf coast league and we were at an older facility you know, it just goes to show you, like, guys are really, really trying to be um, smart, especially if, for people that didn't know before the new minor league deal, players were making five to $13,000 a year. Yeah. And probably for some of these players, they were making more of that five to 8000 a year before taxes, before you have to pay for clubhouse dues for the people helping you out there. And so oftentimes with significant others that have to either not travel with you or not mm -hmm. keep a job. Yeah, so you're you're sending money back. Yeah, if if they're not there, and um, you know, and I think well, it thank, leads thank goodness for thank goodness for for the unionization and, and getting and getting you know, a lot of that fixed. Yeah, can I can I do one more story about how the grind of the minor leagues? Please, please. So the other grind of it, and it's on my uh, podcast with uh, my teammate Steve Klimek. And we were talking about the union and, and how the unionization with minor league players and how, how it's taking a step in the right direction. But Steve brought up a point of like, this was the reality of it. And Steve, you know, said he didn't come from a lot of money as a family, you know, so when he signed uh, his month, he was literally living paycheck to paycheck. And back then you still had to pay for your housing as a player. You still had to pay for your dues. And after all of that, plus after taxes and paying everything he had to pay, he had two hundred dollars, and for that for that dur for for that duration, and so he went to go to uh, get a donut, an actual apple fritter, which apparently is considered a donut. We had this argument on the podcast, so yeah. an apple fritter and a cup of coffee, and it cost like three bucks. And when he gave him his car, it card it got declined. And they said, sorry, sir, we can't. So Steve was like, well, I, I can't afford any coffee or donuts, so I'm just going to wait it out for another week until I get another check. So, like, and, and we laugh about it now, but it's like, man, you know, the, the simple joys of life, that, that's brutal. We could do an hour on things that bothered me in the minor leagues, like using different baseballs when you spend millions of dollars on players. But we've moved on. We're, we're oh, then you, you should talk to Steve because yeah. that was a that was a conversation we brought up. But but you're exactly right. It is a uh, the pr the proving grounds and testing grounds in the minor leagues is a true thing, and it makes the game better. But it's also these guys; it's their livelihood that they're trying to figure out, you know, how to make it. And sometimes that's a that's a challenge when there's a lot of things being changed uh, during during their time there. All right, last question: How well do you know yourself in your own career? 
how many at bats did you have in your minor league career? Oh no. Um I'd like to say I I was definitely over a thousand. Um I think I would be. You were. Would it be safely? I'll I'll tell you safely. Okay. So like fifth thirteen hundred, fifteen hundred? Fifteen thirty two. Oh, oh, hey now. And that's that's at bats, not even plate appearances there. Oh well, yeah. Well that's plate appearances was fifteen thirty three. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was gonna say it can't be that high i was not a big uh base on balls pitch, pitch was eight inches off the plate with two strikes i i, I seemed to stick out my butt and, and swing at it well so. your hitting coach turned out to be vladimir guerrero senior and that was your problem mm-hmm. you know? well and also too before these strike zones uh, i told you this all fair if i got told the to pitch that's, that's six or eight inches off the plate and uh, they called it a strike, and I go, "Is that there?" And they say they they got more. You can bet bet your you bet your money that I am throwing the bat out there because I'd <laughs> rather not get rung up. I'd rather put that ball in play before the ump rings me up, and then I might not be in the game. So, well, here you go, career stolen bases. No, uh, three, four. Oh, yeah, that good. makes me see again. We talk about the speed element there. But they yep. didn't give me – I could have stolen more than that. I know I'm not that fast, but give me the green light. Hit and run. Uh, so did you have a red light? I got to know. Yeah, a- absolutely. It was like a hard red. Yeah. Like my coach would be on third base, and then like it would, if it was the chest or the belt, can't see on here, it would be like he would make it known like you know. Right. And I'm like, that's that's messed up. You know, you, you, you're <laughs> we're – you want. I thought we wanted to win. They, right, they like, don't know it, I'm going to go. Yeah, they don't know I'm going to go. Let me go. Shocker, I could steal 10 bases. Hey, if Greg Maddox could, could go perfect in his career, you could have gotten a couple more. Um, I know. Career, and then however you want to pronounce it, but I'm classic, career RBIs. Not RSBI. Not RSBI. I would say um, 180. Oh, 160. Yeah. Yeah. I never, never had the high RBI years. Tragic. But much, much closer than I expected. Ryan Ripken, five questions. You are done on the hot corner. Congratulations. (laughs) Thank goodness. But, but I appreciate you having me on. (laughs) Well, I hope this was a, was a little bit of fun for you. Um, I'll talk to you in 30 seconds for everybody else. Thanks for another edition of hobby news, daily hot corner, Ryan, where can people find you? You have a great podcast. Yeah, you can find me on all the socials, really. It's just Ryan Ripkin for the most part. And then my podcast is Off Script with Rip. That's on all the social platforms. If you follow me on social media, it'll be up there as well. And and the links are in my bio. See you guys.